this is a divided and chaotic world. A world torn apart by greed and hatred, by desires that spread around the world like a disease. The stress of modern life pushes us further and further apart from each other and nature. The simple fact is that we are destroying the planet upon which we rely for sustenance. Our chaotic minds form chaotic societies. Power and wealth are in the hands of the people who should not have them. We subconsciously know that we have screwed things up and yet we proceed to screw things up a little more with each passing generation. We have forgotten the prime directive of the universe. We ignore its teachings. We fail to listen to its pleas. The truth that will save you and all of mankind is very simple. It is the law of attraction, and it is time to listen and learn from it. William Shakespeare wrote in As You Like It, we are mere usurpers, tyrants, and what's worse, to fright the animals and kill them up in their assigned and native dwelling place. He was pointing out that man, in seeking sanctuary, has destroyed it, and while praising the unspoilt world, they're despoiling it. Wherever we are, and whatever we do, we bring ruin not only to nature, but to ourselves. The reason is simple. We are divided because of consciousness, which brings hate, desire, jealousy, greed, and more. This film is the result of an awakening. It is the same awakening to the self and to the wonder of the cosmos that has driven thinking men and women for generations. It is the same awakening that has been the generative cause of the effect of religion and belief. It is the same awakening that has then caused man to revolt against the same. It is the same awakening that has been written, painted, sculptured, symbolized, and placed into music for thousands of years, from mythology to etymology. This opening up of the mind to the potentials of the human spirit has been known about ever since man began to think. And yet, now in the 21st century, mankind has created more chains to bind himself than at any point in human history. From the very beginning, mankind has sought to free his mind from the constraints of a consciousness that seemed to bind him into a world divided. The animals around him followed natural cycles and marched thousands of miles in tune with the breath of the earth, the phases of the moon, and the warmth of the sun. Man pondered this remarkable phenomena because he was now aware of it, and this awareness gave him the need to explain it. Without explanation, everything seemed strange, and he therefore feared it. What man did not understand, he could not control, and lack of control and understanding meant simply one thing, chaos. The consciousness of the mind needed order to survive, and so he began to form structures within his thoughts for all things. He gave symbols and words to everything that previously didn't need them. The bird didn't care that it was a bird. The fish just were, and the lions were boss in their own domain. The mind of man came along and gave them all names and forced them and himself into ordered boxes. This simply led to constraint and man had begun to form his own prison. He made names for leaders, gave them wonder and awe. He created gods and deities and worshiped them. He ordered his tribe and family structures and at the end of all this, he had developed dogma doctrine, rules, and regulations. Man had made a world of control, and he had no understanding of what he had done. Now, thousands and thousands of years later, our ordering of everything has created a chaotic mess, the direct opposite of what we had intended with our conscious mind. The animals, without self-awareness and higher consciousness, 
still have their natural and ordinary lives. They do not fear not having this or that. They just exist. They, like all things natural, find balance. We, with our millennia of striving to order our lives, have created chaos. And now billions of people are messed up and seeking reconnection to nature. The reason for the failure of our attempts is simple. We are out of step with nature. The route to our own true nature is to be found in the unconscious world of the mind. For in there, our true self resides, hiding like a lost child. We are not aware of this because we are unconscious of it. It's that simple. Our conscious mind is almost an unnatural thing in that it fights with nature because of fear. We all know that we are born and that we die. We know that we exist and so we therefore have a personality. We are individual. This individual is precious to us because we believe it is us. The fear comes when we realize that this individual will one day die, and so it is not the fear of death itself, but the loss of the self. We have created wondrous imaginative answers to this problem, however, by explaining to our own minds that our body is not really us, and that it is simply a container carrying the self. When this container withers and rots, the true self or soul shall carry on after death and be transported to heaven, nirvana, or any other amazing realm perceived and fashioned by our ancestors. It is a triumph of consciousness, a prize of logical thought, that in the first place we became aware of our own frailties, and then discovered that it was all just a minor test on the road to St. Peter's pearly gates. Today, in the 21st century, as the old-fashioned concepts of religion are constantly bombarded by new empowered free thinkers and science, we are finding new ways of explaining our lot. For the fear of the nihilistic mind is still one that strikes a discord, even in the mind of the most erudite brains. Anything from cloning and freezing our bodies to superior alien minds and quantum oneness are being trumpeted out for our choosing, from the physical to the metaphysical. Like the shopping malls of downtown LA, we can choose an answer that suits our personal life, peer group, and sense of right and wrong. The driving force, regardless of century, is still the same, fear. True happiness shall only come when we overcome fear. It seems that no matter how high we climb on the awareness ladder, the same driving force in the consciousness arises, and the same forces of nature surge beneath the surface in the unconscious realm. If the animals move and are driven by the forces of nature, which is something hidden within our unconscious world, then we, as conscious and confused beings, are at odds with this drive. It is a drive hidden in the dark world of the mind, the part we can no longer access with ease. And it is something that we seemingly cannot control because of our disjointed life with the unconscious world of nature, we fear it. Fear is now so complex that it is a paradox in our so-called ordered society, but we need to strip away all the myriad excuses we come up with to replace the word fear and realize that it all revolves around the loss of self. It is, in fact, the sickness at the heart of consciousness, and overcoming this one core principle will set you truly free onto a road without delusions. The reason? Because we create delusions to escape it, and the marketing men of the world use every chance they can get to pull finely woven threads from our fears and form webs that trap us. If you overcome fear, then you will realize that your life has been spent in a web, created from your own emotions. All forms of fear are ugly and create ugly offspring. 
we see these as separate kinds of fear, but they are all from the same parent. This must not be confused with respect, which is the healthy version. I respect the roaring lion. I do not fear it. My respect through understanding means that I will not place myself in danger by stepping in front of a hungry lion. Fear, however, breeds and breeds. It spreads from you to your children and even pets. It evolves and transmutes. It creates prejudice and hatred. Fear is constantly used to manipulate our thoughts, our purchases, our votes, and our wallets. We need only watch the television commercials to see how fear is used to control our actions. But we only have ourselves to blame for handing over the control of our mind to this fear factor. We need to take back control. These are our thoughts and nobody else's. The only way to freedom is through personal integrity and honesty, not with anybody else, but with ourselves. If we are not truly honest with ourselves, then we are simply creating yet more illusions to overcome. If we know that we are deluding ourselves by going to church on Sunday or buying happiness during retail therapy, then we add guilt and confusion on top of fear. We all do this most of the time, and this is why life inside the mind has become so complicated and why we have come so far away from nature itself. Half of the problem is the evolutionary childhood drive to learn, misunderstanding this process, or not even realizing it is there, has caused immense trouble. You see, as we grow, we have an inbuilt drive to learn. And this can cause a slight inferiority complex that we do not know as much as our parents, and so we feel inferior. This can stifle the self and causes us to take on personality as well as knowledge. As long as the knowledge is useful, valid, and valuable, then it is fine. But if the knowledge is worthless and even poisonous, then we are in effect poisoning our minds. Adding the personality of the parent or teacher or other influence is yet again distancing us from who we are and our connections to nature. This drive continues with us even past childhood and is yet another evolutionary drive utilized by the marketing man. A simple example is to take a screen hero, let's say James Bond. We go to the cinema and watch this brave, handsome, and intellectual man save the world. We admire these things, and so we try to emulate them, to take on a Bond persona. In the 1950s, many females did the same with Doris Day films. In fact, none of these characters were real. Doris Day was acting, and Bond is the creation of an alter ego by the writer Ian Fleming, who drank and smoked himself to death at an early age. The point is that we attempt to copy or mirror an ideal that is itself flawed because it was created by a human mind. And so we fall short, as we all must. This leads to yet further elements of inferiority and lack of self-worth. A great many neuroses and psychological problems are caused by lack of understanding of this evolutionary drive and the parent's inability to see this and teach or train accordingly. This film is about the awakening of the self to the world of delusion that we have created, that we live in, and that we force one another still deeper into each and every day. Never in the history of man has there been a perfect time and so we need not seek out a sunken Atlantis. Never in the future of mankind will there be a perfect civilization, and so we better not sit and wait for Star Trek to fix things for us. No one religion is righteous. All fall short of the glory they call God. No state has created the ideal place to live. 
No family is flawless. No friend wholly committed. We are the best thing we have. We have to live with ourselves. Others can run away from us or lock us in a room. We will be in that room with ourself. And so that is where we must find the truth. And that is where we must discover balance and harmony. Listening to the world of man will simply confuse our minds yet further. Listening to nature, which has perfect balance and indeed is powered by the force of balance, is the right place to go for help. We must return to the garden. From the moment we wake up to the moment we fall asleep, we are subjects of a massive machine. We are plugged in like a light that is only alive and lit by the machine. And because of this, we no longer know how to shine for ourselves. But many do not realize that the machine, in fact, feeds from us, using our energy to capture and grow the machine that in turn captures more and more people hourly. We are all in one way or another slaves to the machine. We know how money enslaved us because of the lie and deceit of man and how power was built and maintained by the few over the many. Today, it is the driving force of society. Every single one of us must sell something to get money, whether we sell our skills, services, products, or even our very soul. We all must constantly sell to earn. And because everybody is selling to everybody else, we also buy and buy. In our overpopulated world, full of people who no longer know the skills of basic survival, we must buy the basic products such as food and even water. But man has used his unique imagination to make better and more imaginative food and water, or so we believe. In fact, we dress up the ordinary and use our own inbuilt psychology to convince others that this added value is worth the extra money. We place a clever label on a bottle of water, add mystique, and then charge a ridiculous amount of money for what is basically a free product of the earth that we can longer have access to as individuals because of the society we have created. We do the same for all manner of goods. In addition to this, we also create products or services that we do not need, and again, add value or perception that we want to buy into. Our reality is not true reality. It is not reality, and it is not needed. It is all self-perpetuating a massive lie, and we all in our daily lives help to continue the cycle. We all make dreams and sell them to others, and we then end up believing them ourselves. And before anybody realizes it, we are all living in a dream world that simply does not exist. Billions of children around the world are being fed false realities by computer games. They live out their precious lives in a world that is not real, whilst mom and dad spend their waking moment battling and selling to pay for the products of the delusional world. This causes yet more division within each mind, but also within the family unit. And because all of this is an illusion, not one of them is truly fulfilled. And so the family eventually breaks down, and division in the form of divorce often occurs. The child is only being prepared for one thing, a life of exactly the same as his parents, a treadmill of buy and sell and lack of self-knowledge. Instead of learning the simple basic skills of life and love, children today are taught how to manipulate the illusionary world of computer screens, moving imaginary characters around, killing and maiming the enemy which is normally some politically propagandized and illusionary evil role model. 
Most people do not realize the incredible amounts of money made from the multi-million dollar worlds of illusion, but they also don't realize the propaganda content is immense. In fact, there are many games strategically funded by governments and other agenda-driven authorities and organizations that are specifically written to suck in the minds of the youth in particular ways of thinking. This creates masses of later controllable young adults for the financial war machine and good voters who are now loyal to the cause. We are all pawns in a game that has gone out of control because it is a life spent in an illusionary world with nobody specifically controlling it anymore. We all make assumptions about our leaders, peers, corporations, state, and religion. And yet, all along, they are making assumptions about us. Nobody is in control anymore, for nobody ever was. It is simply a world of the dream state, created over time by one thing and another, without a goal or purpose other than bastardized functions of the evolutionary mind. Now we have a world of technology that is overtaking us, and we have to somehow try to keep our heads wrapped around the lightning speed with which it moves. There are even extensions to the computer game dream world. As with mobile phones, we can in fact take this world of illusion with us anywhere we go. There is no escaping this phenomena because the human tribal instinct to be as good or better than everybody else and to be accepted in our society forces us to participate. In addition, there are new ways for the marketing man to catch us because they now buy advertising space in the illusionary world of the computer game or mobile phone app. So even the marketing man is being sold an illusion, a billboard in the land of illusion. Advertising billboards in a fake downtown city carries the same old messages, and we subconsciously buy into the perception encoded and created. We are lying to ourselves in a world of lies, and we only have ourselves to blame. We kill ourselves to afford to buy a product we don't need at an inflated price because of advertising costs of billboards in a land that doesn't exist. Stand back and think about how stupid this all is. And then think about the eyes of a starving child. How does it make you feel? Adults too are not immune to all of this. By extension, there are now secondary worlds created on the World Wide Web of Deceit, where we can recreate ourselves and live out a life of illusion so that we do not really have to face ourselves and our situations. We can truly offload all responsibility now and become another person as an extension of our worldly ego. Before we know it, we die mentally and spiritually, let alone grow fat and insipid whilst glued to the screen. In this created world, we can even buy fake real estate using real hard-earned money. We can then impress our real friends who join us with this unreal world as if we are really that fake creation by the extension of technology. Around us, a million species die every year and awful suffering is in reality happening because we use energy to disappear into the dark worlds of desire. And so technology, like everything else we humans create, is truly an extension of ourselves, and it yet again is a world of falseness, covering up the real mess we are in. The truth is that the technology we created, with all good intentions, is now driving us, and we have become extensions of the machine itself. 
These leaps in technology are part and parcel of the human evolutionary cycle from the Flint Spear to the Space Shuttle. We cannot stop them, but we ought to be aware of their effects upon the human mind. All of this is why even now in the 21st century, we remain stupid humans who constantly battle with each other because we are forcing ourselves away further and further from the truth of what we really are. We have created a world of imagination in which we can live out a dream life, and to pay for it, we live in hell. One of the messages we seem to now be coming back to again and again is that we unknowingly and consistently delude ourselves. Understanding that we are deluding ourselves and others is the first step on the road to spiritual freedom. There are, of course, many reasons for this. But before we try to understand why, we need to take a look at one of the other delusional states of existence that we have created, food. Food, at the end of the day, is sustenance for the physical body. We have evolved over millions of years perfectly well without the need to put chemicals in with our beef. And yet, this is precisely what we do today. But more than that, we also feed chemicals to the very livestock from which we derive beef. We are far removed in terms of food from our ancestors, and it is in fact relatively recently that we have marched along this road of madness towards a world where we will be popping colored pills in replacement of good, wholesome, and natural food. In reality, due to the fact that our modern diets are so appalling, and that processed food has basically next to no vitamins, minerals, or proteins left. We actually stuff down our necks huge quantities of the same in tablet form. Most of the problem can be traced back to the Second World War, when intense rationing hit Europe, and indeed some form even in the USA. There simply was not enough to go around and many people became malnourished. But the people were rationed of ordinary foodstuffs, indicating that this was still a period of wholesome, home-cooked food. Two things came out of the war in relation to food. The first one was clever invention. Because there was relatively little, we found new recipes. And to feed the soldiers and the huddled masses, we started to prepackage food en masse. The second issue was the post-war population boom. People needed to be put to work across Europe, and infrastructures needed rebuilding. In the USA, the lack of destruction enabled them to grow at an exponential rate in comparison to war-torn Europe. For all of this and more, not least of which is the need for a future fighting force people were encouraged to procreate, to make their nation the strongest and fittest should such conflicts occur again. In the USA, where the infrastructure was intact and simply improved beyond all recognition, the population boomed. But more importantly, wealth grew like nowhere else. America grew while Europe remade. America imagined a bright future while Europe looked back afraid of the past, glaring at each other with afraid eyes. Invention fed necessity, and from here on in the world began to taste the rewards of leisure time and breathe a sigh of relief, and who can blame them? But this leisure time developed into almost a commodity, and soon it too became a battleground with the opposing sides battling out over who had the biggest barbecue, and who went where and how often on vacation. A new war was begun. Time. To facilitate this, the masses were sold all kinds of labor-saving technologies, and one of these was processed food an incredible rise in takeaway and fast food restaurants, 
it was the beginning of the downfall of good, natural, and wholesome food. In the beginning, many of these fast food restaurants provided good food, but eventually, those with the lowest cost bases and most attractive and tasty food would succeed. To facilitate this cheapness, mass production needed to be undertaken of cattle, and so vast swaths of land were cleared of trees, without a thought to global warming and trees producing oxygen. Very little has changed, and massive multi-billion dollar corporations have been formed. In addition to this, new biological and chemical advancements brought new drugs, which meant that cattle could be force grown. What resulted was slightly less tasty beef, and so further chemicals were created to replace the taste, with added sugar and salt, all making the final product taste like something it is in fact not. Today, we consume thousands of times more sugar and salt than we should because it is added to our processed food for taste and preservation. We also have the invention of new sodas, which are carbonated sugar and caffeine sources, leading to hyperactivity, followed by depression and addiction. In recent years, there has been a public backlash against a lot of this, and so the marketing men were called in to point out that a product, which in fact need not contain any fat at all, only contained 10% fat, as if this were now a healthy option. We are now purposely fed an overload of facts and figures, because it stops us even looking. We are told that a drink containing certain chemicals ought to be good for us and actually help us to diet. In fact, this simply means that it contains an artificial sweetener that can cause toxic and poisonous side effects. These artificial sweeteners dissolves in solution and are carried to all parts of the human body and have been known to cause blindness, tinnitus, epileptic seizures, memory loss, and psychological problems. And yet, we are fed these as beneficial parts of our diet to help us lose weight. There would, in fact, be no need for diet drinks, pills, packaged food, and diet doctors if we ate good, wholesome food and used our new leisure time to get out and about without the four-wheel drive and leave the computer dream world and TV behind. Our illusionary world is turning us into mental and physical wrecks, but the marketing man, his junk food, and his television technology forces us into a vicious cycle of eating to be happy because we are depressed that we cannot achieve what others have and perceive others to be happier than us. And once we come down from the drug-laden food and drink, we need another fix to avoid depression or anger. Of course, an awful lot of our problems are caused by our own perceptions or, indeed, those perceptions fostered for us by marketing men and the stars of the screen. There are real stars walking on this planet, and they are relatively unknown. They work hard in the background and have no desire to be seen or known by the whole world. People such as my friend Bridget in Portugal, who dedicated her entire life to saving stray animals and caring for the sick. She is a true star, and yet she was always underfunded. She didn't care about her wrinkles. She cared about the puppy that had hours to live and held it in her arms until it died. She didn't worry about the latest overpriced dress from some French-sounding designer who cannot decide whether he is a man or woman. She cared about the heat of the sun, bearing down on starving stray dogs, kicked out of their homes and unloved. Why do we revere the egotistical monsters in Hollywood and yet ignore the needy? We should all know the answer to this. And if we do not, then we need to reappraise our own lives. 
However, even those with good intentions are not free of the marketing man as far as food is concerned. Many people recognize that the food fed to the masses is quite simply junk, and so they seek out alternatives. In doing so, they simply cannot avoid deception, which is formed at the heart of greed. For instance, to detoxify the body, it is necessary to drink lots of water, and yet our water supply is not always free of lime, fluoride, and other natural and mankind introduced properties. To avoid this, the health conscious buy bottled water without considering the incredible effect this has on the environment with such small things as non-degradable plastic and the fuel cost of the transport. I recently totaled the miles our weekly shop had traveled to arrive in my house and found that we had bought products that could have circumnavigated the globe. Add to this the millions of people around the world doing the same, and the transport and environmental cost is staggering. In addition to this, everything was packaged in plastic, and only 50% of it could be recycled. Of course, in comparison, relatively few people actually recycle. And so the landfill sites around the world are pits of hell, waiting for us to one day realize what we are creating. I wonder, will it all be too late by then and the world scrub us out like an irritating bug? The same is true of most fast food restaurants that cater for our insane 21st century dehumanized life. Your meal comes in plastic or polystyrene. Your drink in a plastic and paper cup with a plastic straw. And all of this with extra salt and sugar in plastic and paper bags. We only ever use these once. And a standard family meal has huge amounts of packaging. All of this has utilized energy and chemicals in the making. And all of it has already traveled thousands of miles to arrive in our bins. And further, all of this feeds our desire for more leisure time, speeding up the cooking and eating process so we can then do what? Use more energy and plastic products destroying the countryside? To pay for all of this, we have to work harder and harder and we pressurize each other in a million different ways. It is all unnatural. Sometimes, when you look at the system, you have to question whether the human race has gone mad. We know the world is warming, and we know we are causing most of it to exponentially increase. And yet, we shrug our shoulders and feed the system. Plastic food eaten by plastic people in a world of plastic. The whole process is madness and simply feeds the profit of corporations who cause the problem and then sell us the cure. And yet, we cannot be absolved of responsibility, no matter how hard we try. We have only ourselves to blame because we ought to know better. Adults have the free will to learn and gather this knowledge. And yet, we would rather spend our hard-earned money gambling buying more drugs in the form of alcohol, cigarettes, and even illegal substances, and desperately trying to liven up our dull lives with extreme sports or watching the stars parade on television. We prefer to pay thousands in loans to get a huge 4x4, which destroys the environment and places us deeper into the cycle of debt like a hamster on a wheel. And yet, none of it satisfies us and we ourselves fall into depression, which requires more spending and more drugs. We visit psychologists, priests, and buy all kinds of products to make us feel better, and yet never manage to discover the secret formula for our own happiness. The confused web we spin around ourselves clouds the fact that our happiness will only be found in simplicity from where we came. Instead, we act like spoiled brats and never grow, 
learn or mature. Our children copy, and we increase the depression and problems of the world, and we call it freedom. True freedom is knowledge of this state we are in and an understanding that we do not need to partake of this food of evil. The human dilemma of imbalance is not new. It is, in fact, as old as man. The problem today is that the majority of the globe has forgotten or been led to forget the simple methods of coming to terms with this duality and correcting it. To fully understand it, we have to go right back to the start, and we may have to get a little metaphysical. In the beginning was the Big Bang, the one divided and divided and spewed outwards into chaos. Division began. The law of attraction was undergoing a cycle. A vast, unimaginable, chaotic mess of division started the whole process. In time, all this division began to come back together and form into order. Eventually, out of this newfound relative order, life emerged. Life emerged from the original one, but it could only form where there was the universal special element of gravity in perfect balance. This is a physical manifestation of the law of attraction. Divide the one, and it will naturally attempt to come back together again. Gravity on Earth runs around the center of the planet, as it does on all planets. This underlying law of the universe reveals the driving force of all order and chaos patterns, that it must return to the one from where it came. As conscious beings, we feel this intense pull upon our very soul, and realize that we are ourselves divided. We mirror the order and chaos of the universe itself. It is seen in our physical forms as we unite with the opposite sex and reconnect. This is the driving force of the entire universe, and the truth of it is revealed when one understands that the universe itself will one day be drawn back into the one via the big crunch. The amazing and metaphysical concept of all of this is that we can and have become conscious of the drive of the universe itself. We have become aware of God. The reason for this is very simple. We ourselves are mirrors of this natural universe because we are in it and of it. We are many universes ourselves, and we express this concept in our own nature. The trouble is that we, as relatively recently conscious beings in this universe, are like newborn stars, still in the chaotic state. We have to grow and form and mature in order to be balanced and ordered. At the moment, we are causing chaos with everything we do, with very few people understanding that their delusional state is actually delusional at all. And without understanding, there can be no correction. Professor James Gardner, a peer-reviewed philosopher of universal law, said that the universe is intelligent at the subatomic level and that it acts like a DNA feedback loop. DNA, as it instructs cells to grow, is fed back information by the cell at the quantum level, and it then uses this information and sends back further instructions. It is believed that the universe does this also, and that we are part of the cellular structure feeding information back into the universal DNA and then receiving new instructions. We are all connected to everything via quantum particle entanglement. We just don't know it. We are, in fact, conscious beings at a level of existence that is mathematically in perfect balance with the universe, and we are at the very center of this structure. There are as many atoms within us as there are stars in the universe. We are perfectly centered in the greater cosmic soup, 
In fact, it would take as many humans to make the mass of our very own sun as there are atoms within us. And so we are at the very center of our solar system. We are connected perfectly to the universe, both at the quantum level and the mathematical harmonious level. It is perfection created from chaos. When our ancestors blew off their conscious world and entered altered states, they uncovered this connection and understood. They left this information for us in symbols and texts, but because the experience is so ineffable, we fail to understand what they are saying. In addition to this, those humans who had created a massive power base with religion did not want their business undermining and so clamped down on anybody who revealed the inner wisdom of connection to the divine in the self or gnosis. In this way, the advancement of understanding was held back and division has ever since grown in the mind of man. Today, we have a divided world created by the divided mind of man, which simply wishes to go back to the one. It is consciousness arguing with the unconscious world that is causing this division. For the facts speak for themselves. We are not separate from the universe in which we reside. We are in fact at the midpoint of it all, and we are conscious of it. The depth of this is incredible, for it is at this midpoint between awake and asleep that man enters into an altered state of consciousness and emerges with intense concepts of knowledge. Our mind mirrors the mind of the universe, and we are physically at the very center. However, there have been a great many men and women throughout time who have managed to get the message across and it can be found hidden within religious texts, which were then literalized and utilized by the power bases so that they eventually lost all meaning. The truth is that we can help our own madness and that we do not require drugs or priests to do so. All we need is strength, will, and knowledge. We can take these three words and use them to better ourselves by seeking balance in our lives. We are all positive and negative, and we constantly cycle between them. The true understanding will only be found in the point between these cycles, in a neutral state. And it is in this state that people find greater understanding, artistic expression, and calm. How do we do this? It is simple, and yet seemingly a million miles away from where we are. Every element of your past needs to be understood to be in the past. It is not with you now unless you make it so. The future, too, need not be worried about, for worry causes conflict and chaos and tips the balance. Both the past and the future are poles, and if we live in either, then we are again dividing our mind. To live now is an anagram of own and it is time that we owned our own lives and stopped shuffling responsibility for ourselves, beliefs, actions, etc. on other times, let alone people, states, and religions. The time and place now is the space between past and future, and so time itself reveals the truths of gravity and number linked to our own well-being. This balancing of extremes and finding the place between is multi-leveled and works on all things in our lives. If we all applied this balance, then we would all be happier and more content. But we would have to apply it to every level of our lives. This, like gravity, would affect those people around us and cause a more balanced society. So too, if we are chaotic and unbalanced, then we would cause more division in others. Influence is itself a good benchmark. How are we influencing others? We can cause all kinds of cycles around us, from influencing a cycle in our children with simple things like swearing, to influencing them with love, 
balanced with discipline. And this brings us full circle to our children and feeding them drugs because we and the chaotic world around them has set them on a treadmill of imbalance. They need to know that we love them enough to keep them safe. It's like putting them into a tiny field when they are small, with a safety fence all around. As they grow, we simply move the fence outwards and make the field larger. We expand their horizons, but still within a safety net. This allows growth, but in a loving and balanced way. Too small a field will restrict growth, and they will learn little, and this is where we get overbearing and overprotective parents. If we fail to place a fence around the field at all, then we have children who unconsciously think that they are unloved, and this shadow in the mind will one day emerge. We will see our children running off over into other fields, causing chaos with others, and placing themselves in physical and psychological danger. They will run into the unknown, and before long will land up in trouble that they have not been prepared for. We will then have to go to extreme lengths to bring them back, if indeed we even notice. All of this is true for society at large, too. Francis Bacon, the 16th century writer and once Lord Chancellor of England, said in his essay of goodness and goodness of nature, sell all thou hast and give it to the poor and follow me, but sell not all thou hast except thou come and follow me. That is, except thou have a vocation wherein thou mayest do as much good with little means as with great, for otherwise in feeding the streams thou driest the fountain. Bacon is showing that no matter how good your intentions may be, if you have not the right knowledge, then you will be like a dry fountain, useless. We must show willing to improve, but begin in small ways and improve ourselves first before attempting to infect others. You see, we are really all to blame for the state of affairs, for the environment, for feeding antidepressant drugs to children, for our own psychosis. Each one of us knowingly uses other people to feed our own self-propelled delusional state. For instance, we all know beyond all doubt that Hollywood stars are ordinary human beings. And yet, we also know that the majority of them are not happy. People see these ordinary down-and-out characters who make it big in Tinseltown and truly believe they too can succeed and live in a delusional world. All that happens is that people romantically assume that they will be spotted for their immense talent and that they will be catapulted to fame and fortune overnight. It almost never happens that way. Instead, people arrive in droves to become gods and goddesses based upon lies and deceit and end up as part of yet another meat factory. Drink, drugs, and debt are more often than not the only outcome. Suicide rates increase. Children are brought up in the most insane, delusional, and illusionary world outside of the Vatican, and the cycle repeats. Out of every star who supposedly makes it big time, there are not hundreds, not thousands, but millions of people who struggle to pay their rent while serving coffee at Denny's. But these millions delude themselves with the dream of the few, and in this they lose themselves. There are two levels of traps into this world. The first one is the assumption that the characters that actors portray on screen are real. We see what they do and believe in them. When Pierce Brosnan played James Bond, he was acting the part. He is nothing at all like that fictional character in real life. It is all illusion. Men around the world watched him and tried to emulate him as Bond. This is why secondary selling is so productive. This is where we are sold items or symbols from the film 
so that we can pretend to be the person seen. For instance, we may go and buy a Bond-type car. Or even more delusional, we may buy the computer game and disappear into the world of espionage, which never has and never will be anything like James Bond. All of this feeds yet further the world of illusion, and we buy into it hook, line, and sinker. We all do this in one way or another. It may not necessarily be a film or TV show that we emulate. It may be a character from a book or somebody that has influenced us in the past. Either way, it is yet still further distancing us from ourself. It is denying the inner law of attraction within each of us. Denying the inner drive to reunite with nature causes chaos, and that brings problems. The second tier of entry is that we believe the stars to be extra special people. We see them in magazines and on the TV and believe the painted images actually portray the real person. We listen to the carefully orchestrated words and read the publicist's lies and assume everything is just perfect at the top. It has been this way ever since Pharaoh had hieroglyphs carved into rock. There are techniques used to create this aura of perfection. Language is used, such as alliteration, repetition, and rhetorical questions. Is Pierce Brosnan a real-life James Bond? This is a rhetorical question that seeps into the subconscious mind and places a concept there to gently settle. Newspapers, news shows, radio, magazines, and now the internet are all utilized in this way, and we don't even realize that we are being led down a certain path. For instance, most countries have a dualistic press. One side will veer towards the left, and the other towards the right. The same story will be reported in two completely different ways. Is President X going too far? Would be a rhetorical question, implying that the president is going too far, whereas our president stands firm implies quite the opposite and personalizes him with our. The same thing is reported, but different angles used, and so the reading public are swayed and split. There is almost no unbiased reporting, because even the reporter has his own opinion, and it is in the same way impossible for any of us not to have an opinion, and thereby be objective, and to read into the story something which may not even be there. This simple example follows through in all our daily lives, and we are completely unconscious of it. In fact, we naturally do it in conversation with each other to give strength to our arguments, both of these traps into the ultimate delusional world of Hollywood. And everything from there downwards are the same. They are both based upon an illusion and a delusion. Hollywood creates the illusion, and we want to believe it to somehow make the world seem right. And hence, the delusion sets in. We are very much prone to ignore and sideline bad news unless it gives us esteem such as for a talking point, and thus giving us superior knowledge. We hope for the best for ourselves and loved ones, and are willing to trust our deluded senses over our intuition, which itself is ostracized into the unconscious world. It cannot all be a lie, can it? The fact is, Behind every person, whether rich or poor, there is a divided human being and one that is nothing to worship, as we seem to the Hollywood set. Our fascination with Hollywood is more often than not due to our own shortcomings. To our modern eyes, the concept of the one or oneness is mystical and Eastern in origin, and there will be found truth in this but we can perceive this reality with our Western eyes. Try to imagine yourself as a grain of sand. You are nestled upon the beach, one of trillions and trillions of grains of sand. 
You are quite separate, and yet also part of and similar to the whole. All you see around you are other grains of sand. But whilst you concentrate on those, you neglect to see the sky from which falls the rays of the sun that contain life and the drops of rain that feed the ocean that formed you. You do not see that those other grains of sand were formed in the same way as you and that they too come from the same rocks. You are all the same. And one day, in millions of years, you will form as ancient sedimentary rock one again. In this way, we are all formed by the same methods, with the same energy. We all eat the same produce of the earth and drink the same water. We shall all return to this same earth from where we came, and the earth shall one day return to the universe from whence it came. Ultimately, it shall all roll up in a big crunch and all be one again. In truth, it is all one anyway. It is all interconnected and via quantum entanglement, every piece of information is everywhere from all time in one place and in every particle. Imagine that. It's like a hologram plate. When we look at it, the picture placed there by light energy, it is three-dimensional. When we smash the picture into a thousand pieces, every piece has the picture of the whole. This is what the holographic universe is like. But this time, we have more dimensions, such as time itself. So imagine, you, as an individual, are really part of a multi-dimensional holographic universe where you are everywhere in all time. Well, that's kind of what the one concept is about in a really simple way. We are all individual grains of sand moving in our own space and time. But we are also related to everything else. Our thoughts are waveforms, but in the quantum realm, they are also particles. Every thought we have is formed by waves and particles. Particles cannot die. They exist forever. If they are destroyed, then physicists tell us that the entire universe will collapse. And so, our thoughts as particles exist forever. But scientists also found that particles can entangle with other particles. Experiments have shown that the thoughts of humans can entangle with the thoughts of other humans, especially when they are emotionally close, such as relatives and friends. We are on the same wavelength. People who are therefore close to the oneness of nature may very well be entangled with the particles of nature, the force that drives us. Getting in touch with that natural part of ourselves is therefore connection to the subatomic world of the universe. This is the realm of the quantum oneness. We came from the one into the one, and so we are the one. Who is it that thinks they can form us, dress us, and then give us life? Nobody owns us. To own is an anagram of now, and in the now, we exist. Whether your family, your town, your school, your employer, or even your political or religious leaders, they all claim ownership at one time or another. And yet, not one of them owns you just because they taught you, gave you life, gave you reason, clothed you or employed you. No ruler rules you. You are equal to everybody and everything else, and no matter what another gives you, it does not empower them above you. You may be a small piece of the holographic universe, but within you is the whole picture right now. This is the lesson that we all must learn, that no matter what influences have preyed upon us, and no matter how much we have wished to hand over the responsibility for our actions and thoughts, we are an equal part of the universe to everybody else. 
and we share in our responsibility of it. No matter how much we believe in this God or that, no matter which political form we adhere to, and no matter what experience we believe has formed our own personal belief systems, we are in fact at the root of it all, an individual life form driven by the force and power of nature from which we came and to which we shall go. This is the law of attraction.